Okay, welcome to PowerShell Saturday. Are you having fun? Yay! Yeah! This is fun. This is my fourth PowerShell Saturday. I always enjoy coming out and hanging out with everybody and getting to talk script because script is all kinds of fun. Now somebody asked me just before we got started if they're going to have to write down everything that I do in this session. The answer is no. If you go right here, aka.ms slash go tpfe, you'll have all the scripts. The slides, it's all out there waiting for you, aka.ms slash go tpfe. So uh, my name is Mr. Ashley McGlone, <laughs> and I am a premier field engineer for Microsoft. My handle on Twitter is GoTPFE. I have the unique distinction on my team at Microsoft that every time in the morning when we wake up, I'm the only one on the team that has bedhead on their chin. <laughs> All right. So I work for Microsoft, I've been there four years. I started out scripting with VB Script. I did that for probably 12 years. Before that, I had a Commodore VIC-20 in 1982. Yeah, it's here for the Commodores, okay. So <clears throat> let's get started with some PowerShell. Uh, first off, I have a quote here that I found. I was in Ed's. I was at Ed's house last night, and he has this ancient textbook of ancient text, and, and I found this quote from Lao Tzu, 4th century BC. It says, give a man a script, feed him for a get date. Teach a man a script, feed him for a new dash time span. So who knew that Lao Tzu knew PowerShell? So my purpose in this session today is to move you from being copy and paste scripters to I can do this scripters. Okay, All right, how many are tired of copying and pasting stuff offline? You want to write your own script. Okay, I want to do this for myself. So that's what this session is about. This is a beginner session teaching you how to fish. And like I said, everything's out online. If you need to grab a copy later to go back and study, there's lots of goodies in that PDF. There's a, a zip download for you on my blog, waiting for you there right now. I just put it up there an hour ago. So uh, this is a two-part session. This is part one. Part one is kind of 100 to 200 level. And we're going to, again, talk about how, how can I do this? What's the magic that happens inside of a PowerShell scripter's head? What is he thinking about that I don't know to think about when he sits down to write a script? And that's what we're going to talk about. Go from instead of just going to, to Ed's blog or copy and paste off TechNet somewhere, now you can actually figure out how to write this for yourself. So that's what our goal is. And then part two is going to be after lunch, when everybody's asleep. All right, That's going to be level 200 to 300. We're going to take it up another notch and go into functions and modules how you can take your code to the next level. So why script? You tell me. What's the point in writing a script? OK, I can hit a bunch of machines at once. What else? Not having to do stuff over and over, and over. I don't have to keep clicking. You're right. What else? Automation. Uh, remove errors. Remove errors? Yeah, that's a good one. What else? No compiling, that's really nice. Impress your friends. That's it. There's a man right there. He should get every book on the table. Okay. And, and along with compiled, no uh, installation. No install. That's great. Don't have to worry about DLLs and registry hacks and all that. So here's a couple that I came up with. It's repeatable, like we said. Now, I don't have to sit there and click next, click next, and browse through and type or whatever. It just, it's just going to work every time. It eliminates human error. You know, if I need to change the IP address of a DNS address on 40 servers, and I'm going to do that with RDP and go to every server and type that in, really? I mean, I'm going to fat finger some of those. And it, Usually these change controls are scheduled for after hours anyway when I'm half asleep. So I don't trust myself. I'm going to do it with a script. Uh, change control logging. If you have to, does anybody here have to do change controls? 
Oh, I, f I figured there'd be a few of us. All right, so now you've got a script that says, this is exactly what I did. If you want to know what happened, read the script. And then I can take that script from the test environment, run the same thing in production, and we're good to go. We know exactly what happened. It was done the exact same way. It's going to save you all kinds of time. I had a customer uh, several years ago. We were working on Active Directory sites. And he had a bunch of what we call empty sites without domain controllers. And we wanted to put them in a, a new site link, but there were only three or 400 of these. And I'm not going to sit there and click for days to move all these sites and site links around. And we did it with a script in a few minutes. So it's a huge time savings. It's also job satisfaction. It satisfies that creative need inside of all of us to build something. I mean, it's just the same reason we play with Legos, right? Because we like to create stuff. So we could do that. And finally, it's job security. If you want to have a job in five years or have a job that really pays better than what you have now, you should learn PowerShell. Anybody, can anybody attest to that? Has PowerShell helped you in your career? Okay, yeah, I see some hands. Very good. Job security. When you become that go-to scripter on the team, that's good for you in the long run. So here is the PowerShell scripting process, kind of start to finish. I've got an idea. I've got to achieve something. I've got to automate something. Somebody steps into my cube and says, hey, can you get this for me? got some, some problem to solve. And I start out at the console just tinkering with some commandlets, trying to find where I'm going to get that information for my script. Next I move into the pipeline and I start rolling things together into one big line of code. Then I can take that and move it into the ISC and make a script file. I can rerun that over and over. Then I can take that code and put it into the template functions that I can continue to call with special logic in there. Take those functions, put them in a module, and now I'm creating my own commandlets that I can use in the session. And that makes me a PowerShell script hero. All right, and that's what I want you to strive for. And so that's what we're going to talk about in this session. How do I take something from an idea to being the go-to scripter on my team? So, first off, the idea. You start out with a need. Like I said, the, somebody walks into your cube and they say, hey, I need to know how many Windows XP machines do we still have running around? Uh, anybody? I won't even ask. <laughs> All right. There, anytime you're sitting there working on your computer and you're thinking, there has to be a better way to do this. There's got to be a faster way, a better way. It's probably PowerShell. Too much clicking. Yeah, we just talked about that. So what are some examples of ideas? Uh, one that I like to tell people to think about is take your top five help desk calls, or maybe just the ones that get routed to you all the time anyway, and automate the solution if it's possible. If it's just uh, restarting a service, you know, refreshing some kind of web app, whatever, take those top calls that come to you and automate them so now you can whip out your phone, use PowerShell Web Access, go kick off the script, and go back to bed when they call you at 3 a.m. Right? Uh, server build process, your monthly inventory reporting. You know, so every at the end of every month or every quarter, you've got to run some disk space report across your maybe your mailbox sizes or database sizes. And you got to go RDP to the box, and you write down some stuff in a spreadsheet, and then you email it out, maybe put some charts in there. Why not just schedule that as a PowerShell script that runs automatically every Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock so the boss doesn't realize that you're really home gaming? Okay? And it looks like you're being productive. And you, you were for the 30 minutes it took to write that script. Okay? And you could even do useful things like calculating how many days are left until talk like a pirate day. September 19th. Arr, yes. Okay, next. So I've got an idea. Now I've got to figure out how to get the data to work with in my script. I need some input. Classic computer science 101. Input, process, output. So I've got to get some input from somewhere. And that's going to come through commandlets. I've got to find those commandlets. What are the commandlets that I need? 
and how can I use them? Well, I can use things like get help, get command, and show command. How many of you use show command? PowerShell v3, v4, this is your new best friend. If you are a beginner in PowerShell, this is the one thing you need to know, show dash command. Now I can go in there and it's a GUI that lets me find commandlets and then fill in the blank and hit run. So it's a GUI that writes shell code. How about that? So show command, and then we can use things like get sim class, get member, format list star. Once we start getting results back from these commandlets, we need to know what properties and methods we can use. For example, if I want to filter in a where, uh, I'm going to pipe something to a where, and I want to filter on it, I got to know what the property name is. So I can use get member and format list to find that information. Next is the pipeline. I like to do everything I can in one line of code. I mean, it's amazing. That's what PowerShell's for. You know, I mean, nowadays I can create a whole uh, inventory of, let's say I wanted to take a list of computers from a text file and go find out what is the BIOS version date of these uh, desktops in the environment. We've got some outdated BIOS. I need to go figure out which ones need to be updated. And I can go grab all that data, import the list from a text file, and then I want to dump it out to a CSV when I'm done that shows me here's the machine name and the BIOS date and version and manufacturer, all that jazz. I can do that in one line of PowerShell with a pipeline. It's amazing. I don't even want to think about how many lines of VB script that would take. Right? So I can do that now with one line of code and I don't have to use all these variables. You know, a lot of times when you start out doing PowerShell, if you've done VB script before, everything goes in a variable. So you've got all these lines of variable equals, variable equals, variable equals, and then you put them all together in a line somewhere else. But now in PowerShell, you can just string all that into one line of code. You don't have to use all those variables everywhere. So in the help, there's a uh, get help about <coughs> underscore pipelines. I would encourage you to read that. You can type that in at the console, get dash help about underscore pipelines, tell you everything you need to know. Here's some examples, get service where they're running, sort them by name, and pipe them out to a grid view where I can filter and view them very easily on the screen. All right, get a list of servers uh, for each one of those, get the hot fixes on it, and then export that to a CSV file. Done. One line of code. Love it. Scripts. So I've been working at the console and tinkering around with get member and uh, show command, finding what commandlets that I need to run. And then I've got some things kind of working at the blue console window. And I'm ready to actually take it to the next step and save those in a script file that I'm going to run over and over and over once I've got that built. So I'm going to move that into the ISE. I can add parameters then, so I can put some variables in there. So when I run the script, I can pass in a different computer name next time, something like that. So once I have a script file, I can run it. I can run it against remote machines using invoke command. I can put it in a scheduled task or a login script. So now I'm, I'm moving up to the next tier. I've got another notch in my belt on the PowerShell progress bar. After that, I'm going to take uh, that script then. You know, I'm going to date myself. Freshman year of college, I was taking Turbo Pascal 4.4. <laughs> and uh, all of my Commodore programming days as a kid growing up uh, taught me one thing. I was self-taught. And so my professor introduced me to a new term called spaghetti code. <laughs> I'd never heard that term before until I got to college. And he said, boy, this is spaghetti code. So what do you do to make your code easier and reusable? And you, know, you create functions. And these functions are atomic. They serve one purpose. And so you try to you know, keep it short as you can. You basically got some business logic, some special foo or magic in there. So every time I call that function, it's going to give me the result back. And you can call that function all day long, and it's going to continue to give you that result. And you pass in different parameters, and you get that special magic back, that logic you put in there. Those are really fun to write, and you can just use them over and over. Yes? Does anybody make a refactoring engine for 
power scripted code? Yes, there is. I don't know. Is there, there is a refactoring? I don't know who it is. Uh, uh, we'd have to look it up, yeah. But yes, there is a refactoring engine. So uh, the functions then, you can standardize the logic that you're using in your script, and it makes it easier to use, parameterize it. Uh, control J in the ISE. How many of you used the ISE in PowerShell 3 and PowerShell 4? Okay. Have you hit Control J? Same thing as Power GUI. It brings you snippets, templates of code. So if I don't know what a switch statement looks like, or if I don't know how to build a function in PowerShell, I just hit Control-J, and I scroll through the list and pick it, and it throws out a template for me to start working with. It makes it real easy to get started in PowerShell. So there are several help topics here about functions, about underscore functions, about functions advanced, about functions advanced parameters. I think that's about the longest about topic name I've seen right there. <laughs> Uh, and in PowerShell 3, those will tab complete, so I'm not going to type all that either. So here's an example of a function. <clears throat> I can use read host to get input from the user in PowerShell. And let's say I prompt them for a computer name, and then I continue with the script, and somebody typed in a bogus computer name. Well, that's going to blow up my script. Well, instead, I can create a function called get really good computer name and then every time I call that function, it says, enter the name of a computer. And they type it in, but it doesn't finish yet. It goes and pings it or checks WMI query against that machine to make sure it's really there and online. And then it continues with the script. So I can write my own little function that says, get a real computer. And that's uh, just a real simple example there. Then once we have all these functions, they've got get dash this, set dash that, whatever we've put in there, register, you know, restart, whatever kind of functions we've built, we can save those in a module, and then that module can be shared with our team, we can put it on a share on the network, we can put it out online for others to download and use, and that module makes our code then portable so that we can share it and reuse it, and it really makes a standard uh, package, it just kind of wraps it up with a bow so that I can give it to others. So an example would be all of your help desk scripts. Maybe you want to put all of those in one module. and Maybe you've got your weekly, monthly reporting in another module. And so you just import that module, and then you can run those functions all day long. And it makes it look like a commandlet in your own session. It's really nice. So uh, these functions and modules, that's what we're going to cover more in the second session. We're going to start out a little easier here right up front. And if you brought a laptop or tablet or something with you, uh, I want to make this as interactive as possible. So if you have any battery left, uh, go ahead and fire up your laptop and we can do this together. And what we're going to do is it's just a real simple case study and we're not even going to get all the way finished with it, but there are completed demo scripts of how this would all look just like uh, Bobby Flay in the kitchen, you know, at the end of the show, he pulls it out of the oven, it's all done. He's like, where'd that come from? All right, well, we've got all those scripts waiting for you on the blog with the download zip. So we're going to try this together. And we want to get the last date a patch was applied to a box. We want to get the uptime for that box. And then we want to be able to do that for one server or a whole list of servers. So that's our goal, that's our programming task, our problem to solve, that's our idea. And what I want to do now is to try to solve this problem together uh, as a class. So here I am at my PowerShell console. And first things first, uh, I need to figure out a way to get uptime. Gee whiz, get help, okay. Get help's going to get me some understanding on how to use the help system. It doesn't have anything to do with uptime, though, does it? It's a great, what's that? Get command? All right, get command. Does, does anyone have an idea where would I find that kind of data, that data about a machine? WMI. Somebody said it. I heard it. All right. WMI is where I'm going to get that data about a machine. WMI is your best friend. It's like a Swiss Army knife in your PowerShell tool belt. 
All right. So I know that I need some WMI data. We talked about get command. Let's use show command here. Show command. And I never type anything all the way in. I'm going to use tab complete. Show command. And it pops up here. And I'm going to look for something that says WMI. And there's a get. That sounds right. I click on get. And what do you know, here I have a GUI that says, here are the different ways you can specify parameters for the get WMI object commandlet. And over here's a question mark, because I don't know what does this, what does this mean, authority? Who knows? Let's click on this question mark. And now I get a graphical help window. Let me scroll that up a little bit. And now, whoa, that's a lot to read. Uh, I'm too lazy to read all that, right? So I'm going to scroll down to the examples all the way at the bottom. Because, you know, let's, let's face it, I don't want to read all that. It's just show me, show me what works here. What am I going to, what do I got to get to down here at the bottom? I'm going to scroll all the way down the help to my examples. Now we're talking get WMI object dash class win32 process. Well, I doubt processes have uptime in it. Uh, so we got to figure out where to get uptime. So get WMI object is going to help me. And we keep on going here. And, and I'm actually going to kind of cheat and jump ahead and show you one other thing that we can use. There's a new commandlet called uh, SIM. WMI is a uh, Microsoft implementation of SIM, the Common Information Model Industry Standard. And in 3, we release some of these new things like get SIM class. And that's going to help me find the commandlet. So I'm looking for a parameter name. Let's say get sim class, class name. And I'm going to say star boot star. I'm looking for some kind of WMI class that's going to have a boot parameter property in there somewhere for boot time. So I'm going to run that. And what it does is it goes through and finds all of the uh, sim classes that have boot in the name. But that, that didn't really get what I want. Let's do this. Uh, let's do sim class. And I'm looking for a property name. There we go. Because I figured, how, how would you calculate uptime? All right, last boot subtracted from today's date and time. So I've got to find the boot time of the box. So I'm going to look for anything with star boot star as a property name. And here I've got uh, disk partition. That probably doesn't have boot time in it. Operating system. That's a good possibility. And computer system. Boot configuration, no, that's like my boot menu. That's probably not going to be it. So uh, let's say computer system or operating system. So using those, uh, that show command we did just a second ago there, show command. And I'm lazy. Oh, I forgot. I'm lazy. Let's, let's uh, copy this. Just double click and hit enter. So now I'm going to say uh, get dash sim instance is the commandlet that's going to tell me and I'm going to get the class name for computer system here. And that brings back my Win7 PowerShell 3 install machine. Dan Park is the uh, user on that box. But where, where is the pro property for boot? How can I find that boot property and what's in it? Get member. OK. That's one way to do it. So let's run that line again up arrow there. Pipe it to get member. And there are a lot of property names in here. Uh, let's, do you see anything that has boot in it anywhere? There's boot option, boot, nah, that's boot ups. That's not really the boot time I was looking for, was it? So let's go back. I'm going to up arrow here and find, uh, what was that last command? There we go, property name boot. So we had computer system. There's also operating system. Let's try that one. I'm just going to type this one out. Get sim instance. Right click to paste. And I'm going to pipe this one instead of to get member. I'm going to do a format list star, which says, I know you usually only give me five or six properties when I retrieve this. 
but tell me everything, star, all of it. Show me all of it. <clears throat> and now we're looking for something on the left that has boot in the name. You see anything that's got boot in the name there? Uh, maybe I'm missing it. Hey, wait a minute, right there. Last boot up time. Touchdown for the Seahawks. All right. <laughs> Rub that in. All right. Last boot up time. There we go. So I have found last boot up time. I feel like Indiana Jones. I'm down in a cave. I just dodged a spear and I found the boot up time. So here we go. Get sim instance, win 32 operating system, and I'm going to select last boot up time there. Oh, nice. So now I've calculated, no, I haven't calculated anything yet. I know what time it booted. Well, you also got local time as, as the property right next to the last boot time. Okay. Local time. Oh, that's true. I didn't think of it that way. So you can get your result in, in the query. Yeah. So let's continue down this path. If I'm going to do some date math, there are a couple different complicated .NET ways to do that, but I'm not a .NET developer. I'm a PowerShell guy. So let's figure out if I'm going to go back to show command and find a commandlet that's going to help me with this. And I'm looking for something to do with time. Look at this. <laughs> Get dash uptime. Where did that come from? You know what? That's because it's in my module that I forgot to uh, remove before the session. Oh, man. All right, let's, uh, you know what, I'm going to fix that really quick. Uh, let's, let's do this. I'm going to go to uh, Documents, and this folder never existed right there. No, there's no such thing as a get uptime commandlet. Why not? All right. Because watch, I'll show you. There's no such thing as a get uptime commandlet. Here we go. And I'm looking for time. Ha, oh, yeah. I told you. See there? These are not the commandlets you're looking for. <laughs> okay, so now I've searched on time and I come up with this commandlet new time span. Now, if you've not seen this one yet, this has been around since at least PowerShell 2, maybe PowerShell 1. There are all kinds of really cool commandlets built in. And a lot of times we spend our hours at the console writing stuff that's already in there. So do your homework before you start writing something that you're thinking, this should already be in PowerShell somewhere. Okay. Well, here's a new time span commandlet. And what it's going to do is it's going to calculate for us the difference. If I click the help here. It says uh, creates a time span object that represents uh, time travel in an alternate universe. No, um, time span between subtracting a date and time without parameters, uh, blah, blah, blah. Start is optional, end is optional. Well, what's going to happen here? Uh, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to grab my get sim instance with the time. And I'm going to assign that to a variable called last boot equals, and I'm whoops, and I'm going to cheat and uh, shortcut things here because we're short on time. I'm going to do this little trick called select object, expand property, last boot up time, and what that does is it will give me just just the value. It doesn't. It strips off that property and object around the value and it just gives me the value itself that date time that I want to work with so now I have the last boot of that machine in a variable let's stop and recap how did we get here what were the tools we used to find this show, show. show command right well, your command is redundant you have two selects so don't need both. you're right you are right. That's what I get for improvising. So let's uh, let's take that out. That looks really complicated. Let's take that out. Very good. I'm glad you caught that. There we go. Last boot. Dollar last boot. Dollar last boot. There we go. So I've got a date time now in dollar last boot. <clears throat> New dash time span. 
dollar last boot. Now, the thing you need to know about new, new dash time span is if you only give it a single parameter, it calculates the difference between right now and that date. So it tells me total days, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. So if I really want to know how many milliseconds my machine has been up, now I know. I can go to sleep tonight knowing that. <clears throat> now, time span is a really handy trick, but that's not what this session is about. This session is about how to find this stuff, how to start writing your own scripts. So the process that I want you to see here, yeah, that's really fun, and we found that. And that's what the PowerShell script writing process is like. Sometimes you just stumble onto a new command that you've never seen before, just like Indiana Jones down in a cave somewhere. And you're like, wow, this is really fun. So what we've done is we've discovered how to find the commandlets that we need. That's the first step in our scripting process. Now, we also want to look at uh, the last patch date that uh, was on that machine. This, so far, gets us the boot and total uptime here. Total days, 0 0.06. This machine is barely awake. All right. So now let's think about patches. I want to get the, the last date a patch was applied to that machine. Here's where I'm going with this. This is a real-world scenario, OK? I, I go to customers. And I assess their Active Directory environment for health. And one of the things that we check to see, how long has it been since you've applied patches in your environment? So if you're not patched, there's a good chance you're not healthy. Now, I've, I've found servers that have been up over a year with no patches. Now, if it's server core, you can do that. You can stay patched and stay up with server core. But on a regular, uh, let's say an old 2003, domain controller that's not been rebooted for a year, you're asking for it. All right. So <clears throat> we want to now find out what's the last data patch had been applied to that box. So if I search help for patches with show command, show command, and I look for patches here, nothing. Squat. Uh, what else? What else could we look for? Service. Service. Get service. Yeah. Hot fix. All right, let's try that. Hot fix. Hey, look, now we're cooking with gas. There's some hot fixes right there. So now I've got this hot fix commandlet. And again, I'm lazy. I'm just, I'm not even going to bother to read the help. I'm just going to hit run. And it takes it a minute because it's got to go to WMI and pull all this back. And so here we've got it. We've got the machine name, uh, what type of update it is, the KB, who installed it. But I need to see more than that. Get hotfix. And I'm going to pipe that to what would show me all the properties and values. All right, format list star. And there they go, scrolling along. Man, that's a lot of stuff to watch. <laughs> That'll make you nauseous if you look at that too long. All right, so I've got all this stuff in here. And really what I'm looking for would be uh, what, what property here? Install date. That's empty. That's bogus. Well, that's a bust. Uh, what else we got? Ah, there we go. Installed on. So this is the process, OK? Now I've, I've found out how to get the date the machine was booted from WMI using get sim class, get sim instance. Now I've got a hot fix here. I've got the date that it was installed. So let's grab uh, get hot fix. And we're going to pipe that. This is the next step. Once we've got individual commandlets working, we're going to string them into a pipe. And I'm going to pipe that to a sort on uh, installed on. I'm going to select, I can't remember, there's got to be a name property in there. Select name, comma, installed on. Let's see, did that get it? All right. Hotfix ID, thank you. Hotfix ID. There we go. So now I've got a sorted list by date to see 
what are all the hot fixes that have been installed on this box? And it's been uh, February. That must have been the date it was built because everything looks like that date. And I've been a really negligent admin because I've only installed one patch on this box in the last year. Wow. Okay. So I want to pick out just that last date, though. I want to know the last date a patch was applied. So we've got a problem now. How can I get just the last row here? But, they, but you're sorting by name and date. You're not sorting by, by date. I'm sorting by installed on date. It yep, it's sorted by installed on. No, but your, first, your hot fix ID is the first column that you're sorting on. No, my sort sort right here says installed on. So I'm sorting it by the date it was installed. All right, somebody's got it back there. But I, I've got to figure out how to how do I find out? I, I can't just know that. It's not I'm not born with that knowledge. I gotta find it somewhere. So select is your best friend. So I'm gonna do here um, get help, select object dash new property for some of you show window this is the window help we were looking at just a second ago so get help select object show window now Jeffrey Snover has anybody not heard of Jeffrey Snover All right, he's the guy that invented PowerShell alright he will tell you himself that every time he sits down to write a script he uses the help I've been doing this for several years I use the help every time I write a script because I don't know everything. I work for Microsoft and I don't know everything. <laughs> I feel better now. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and look and see, and when I look at the parameters here, there's a last and a first for select object. So let's scroll down at the parameters and see what that means. First specifies the number of objects to select from the beginning of an array of input objects. That sounds fancy, arrays and objects that's going to make my head spin, but I'm going to take a gamble here and let's uh, let's try that. So get hotfix sort select in hotfix ID installed on dash first one, and that's 2010. Whoops, we're going the wrong way. Let's do uh, let's do last one. <coughs> There we go. There it is. We picked off just the last row. Sniper, got just the last one. All right. So now we need to figure out how to pick off just the value of that date and strip away all that object stuff around it. Well, I'm going to uh, teach you a little shortcut here. I'm going to take that whole line and I'm going to put it in parentheses. And we learned this in junior high school in math. What happens with parentheses? You do that first, all right? And then there's a property called installed on. I can see it right there. So I'm just going to type dot installed on. Touchdown, Seahawks. All right. <clears throat> so there we go. We've, got a, we've now got two dates. We've got the date the machine was booted, and now we've got the date of the last patch. Yes? You're right. Yep. So the better way to treat this would be to backspace here. And we're going to pipe this to get member. And if you see right here, we've got a property called installed on. So I know I can put a dot before that and grab it. And if it's a method, I can put a dot and the method name and then some prints <coughs> after it. So in this case, we've got a property. And it's going to work just like that. So it gets all the hot fixes, sorts them by the install date, picks off the last one, and then grabs the date from that. Hey, we're, we're moving right along with our script task. We need to find boot, boot time, which leads us to uptime, and then we get the last patch install date. Yes? Isn't that a little inefficient, having to read in all the hot fixes? Can you not just search through the hot fixes without reading them all in and find the last one? That is a great question. 
And if we're going to use the get hotfix commandlet, I, I'm not a master of that commandlet. I don't think there's a filter syntax in there. But if we really wanted to be more efficient with this, we could go behind the scenes to the WMI that services this commandlet and actually put a filter in there to try to filter it some way. I still don't know if that would get us all the way there, but you're right, it is a little slow. Unless the event log is already rolled. You got some problem server machine that rolls the log too fast, it, it'd be kind of hard to find. Yeah. An object browser? Um, there, there are some object browsers out there, not native in our PowerShell tools, though. Question? No, you're still going to have to search the entire list of hotfixes for the last page. Right. You still have to go through there. Do, do any of the commands you're using? Have a max, uh, no, no, that's what we use the sort and the select for. All right, uh, we're we're getting a little far afield now. That this is a really fun problem to solve, and we're now getting too much into the problem instead of the, the way we're solving it. So this is this session is all about the way we're solving the problem. So we're using what were the command lists that we used to get to this stage of the game? Show command. Show command. What else? Get sim instance, get help. Get hot fix, all right. Uh, show command and format list star, get member. So that's, that's where we are in our scripting learning process here. Now at this point, I'm gonna type get dash history and it's gonna show me everything I've typed. And I don't need all of that. I just need just the command line. So let's say uh, get dash history select command line. And then I'm going to wrap that. So let's uh, do a format table dash wrap. So now I can see all everything that I've typed. And I'm going to, I'm lazy. Right? Remember that. I'm lazy. I don't like to retype things. So I'm just going to grab this, click and drag. Little tip for you. Under the, that top left corner, that little menu that we introduced in Windows 3, all right, down here under properties, go to uh, this checkbox, quick edit mode. Make sure that's turned on for your PowerShell session. So then I can just click and drag and it press enter or right click to copy that and now I pull up my uh, editor over here and I hit paste and I'm just gonna clean up the line wrap and just like that I'm almost done writing a script let's go back down here and find the last little bit okay and just like that and now I do dollar uh, last patch equals patch uh, oh yep installed on dash last one all right so now if I run that and I want to print out what's the last boot let's do this uh, last boot. Wait, wait, that's last boot. That's I copied the wrong line. Imagine that. I made a mistake. So let's go find, uh, let's see. I named it wrong. New time, span. New time span last boot. That's what I want right there. Yeah, so let's get, uh, let's paste this in here. New time span last boot. And then let's do dollar last patch. And we're just going to hit the run button. And there we go. So we're getting closer. And now we've just kind of kind of prettied up and get the <coughs> stuff the, the way we want it. We've got the uh, uptime here. And we've got the date time stuff for the last patch. All right. So that's the discovery process. And that's what I wanted you to catch in this session, not last boot. That's not the point. <laughs> I want you to understand how we got here. We use show command, get member, 
get help, format list star. These are little bullets in your Lone Ranger silver tool belt, right? You got your little silver bullets. You pull those out. I'm going to use show command this morning and find out where I need to go with the script. Where, where can I find the data? All right. Another way to do that would be to search on um, help. If I just do something like uh, get dash help star hotfix star and it finds get dash hotfix. So that's another way to find commands where the keyword might not be in the commandlet name, it might be down in the help somewhere. So has this been helpful? Yes. Okay, very good. So what I've done, remember I said I'm a little Bobby Flay on the inside here. We got this already cooked up in the kitchen. So here, these scripts, when you download uh, from my blog today, you go out there and download all the scripts and the PDF with all the slides, you'll have all this, and it basically does exactly what we just did. So we go through to, to use the different commands to discover it. We use a little bit different technique in here using get WMI object, but it's all going to get you there. So now I've got this script. I've had some time to work on it. And here's a script that says, uh, remember earlier I said, hey, grab a computer name, but we want one that's a real computer name. So I can run this little loop here using the uh, run selection tool up there. And so it's going to prompt me for a computer name now. I'm gonna, let me just clear that and run just that piece of code. Do read host until I can actually get a WMI connection to that. Now, is there a computer name environment, my environment named ASDF? Probably not. So I've got 10 minutes, right? Am I over time? I thought we had on the schedule. Did something change? 12.30. Man, you're giving me the yank. New dash time span, yeah. Go read your blog. All right. So, all right. So ASDF is not a valid computer name because I'm going to continue to prompt the user until I can get a valid WMI connection to that box. So now let's try uh, CVDC1. That sounds weird, but hey, that's a valid computer name. All right, I've got a good computer name in my script now. And up here, I'm going to run some... Uh, commands that we kind of worked on. This is a little different variety, but it's doing the same thing. Passing in that dollar computer name now. And it runs against that computer and it comes back and it says last patched on. Now wait a minute. There we go. Yeah, that's the command. Here's the actual output. Uptime is 0 .07 days. Last patched on 1024. There we go. So we've actually taken those lines now and copied and pasted into a script file that we can begin to manipulate and work with. So for part one, that's where we're going to kind of, I'm not done yet, but that's where we're going to kind of wrap this content for the first session. The next session, we're going to go in and look at how can I take this and put it into a function that looks like a commandlet, and then I can share that with other people on my team to say now if you need the uptime report or the patch report, you just run this commandlet from my module. So that's what we're going to talk about after lunch. But before we do that, uh, I do have a couple wrap-up slides. If I can get that out of there. There we go. So that is the scripting process kind of from start to finish. I've got an idea. Today we needed to find uptime and the last patch. Then I move that into the commandlets. I've discovered now using show command, get command, get help. I'm discovering what I need to use. I'm using get member and format list to find the property names involved. I put those into a pipeline, pipe it into a sort, pipe it into a where, pipe it into a select. Then I copy that out and put it in a script file. And I'm going to leave you hanging right there till after lunch. So let's recap the whole development cycle here for just for a minute. I've been doing this for a, a few years, and it's a lot of fun. 
Here we go. Write test the bug. Write test the bug. Write test the bug. Can we say that together? You think that'd be fun? One, two, three. Write test the bug. Write test the bug. Write test the bug. Now we need some signs. March around. Okay. Very good. So, so I can actually get that first kernel of a script together. Write it. Test it. Debug. And I just do that over and over and over. And then, then I get the functionality kind of working. It's like we did just now. Hey, I'm getting back some data. This is looking like what I want. After that, then we make it friendly. Phase two, we've got to put some comments, some help in our script. We've got to add some error handling and logging. Boy, those are a chore. Nobody likes to write that stuff. I don't like to write that stuff, but you've got to put it in there. Okay. Then last is release. You've got your script ready. It's working. You've tested it. You've documented it. You've documented it. <laughs> You've documented it, all right? And then you release it, all right? You publish it. You give it to the people on your team. You upload it to TechNet Script Center. You send out a tweet. And then people start using it, and they come back, and you actually have to support it then. <laughs> so, it's like, wait, yeah, exactly. This doesn't work on my machine. Well, come over to my cube. It works on my machine, you know? So you got to figure out why is it not working, right? You got to support your stuff. Do some version control. So that's kind of the life cycle of development. And I didn't copy that out of anybody's book. I know people have written books about that stuff. This is just kind of my own observations over the years. So last but not least, to wrap this up, you can get all of these scripts and these slides out at aka.ms slash gotpfe. And also, because this is a beginner session, I wanted to give you some other good places to go for more information. There is a Microsoft Virtual Academy.com, the man himself, Jeffrey Snover, and PowerShell MVP, Jason Helmick, have two full days of free training waiting on you out there. So go get it straight from the source. Uh, I teach PowerShell for Microsoft Premier customers. I'd love to come see you and teach you, but until I can get there, go out here and get two free days of PowerShell training, two classes right there for you, jump start. And then this guy standing in the back of the room, he's written a number of books, two of which are steps, step by step and first steps for PowerShell. Go check those out as well. He's got a whole bunch more, but those are some that will help you as a beginner. Okay. And I think that wraps us up. All right, I'll leave those up there. So we have five minutes for any other questions before we go to lunch. If you ask a question, you're keeping everybody in the room from eating. <laughs> All right. Uh, importing PSM files. Uh, is, there, is there a quick way to say import all PSM, fi PSM files from a directory? You could write a script to do that. Just loop through, do a get child item. Get The question is, if I want to import a bunch of modules, PSM1 files, how can I import them all at once? I just do a get child item for star PSM1. And I'll get all of those and then pipe that to an import module for that path name to the file. Can't you just put it in your profile? You can put it in your profile, but if there's a if the folder list is changing over time, that would do it. Any other questions? How do you find the version? I'm glad you asked. So when I'm running PowerShell and I want to know which version is on my console. There are a couple ways. Ah, there we go. I can type dollar host and dollar host is going to come up and give me a version. I can also modify that dollar host dot version. But an even better one is uh, dollar ps I type today. I had all kinds of trouble. PS version table gives you the PowerShell version and the .NET CLR version as well. Other questions? You're welcome. Can, can I create a, a bat file out of the Can you make a bat file out of your script? Uh, yes, you can. What you do is you save your PowerShell script as a PS1 file. Mm -hmm. Then you call that from PowerShell.exe and you give it the script file you want to run. Mm -hmm. Then you would take that and put it in a batch file. So your batch file calls PowerShell.exe with the parameter of the script that you want to run. Yep. 
great questions. I'll be around at lunch if you have any other questions. And uh, if you don't have anything to do after lunch, come back and see me. All right. Yeah. You're dismissed.